mayhem in the aftermath of drone strikes in central Kyiv on Monday morning. Kyiv's mayor said the capital central Shevchenko district faced the brunt of it, damaging several apartment blocks and setting fire to a non-residential building. Explosions resounded during the morning rush hour from the same central Kyiv district where a missile strike a week ago tore a hole in a children's playground. Buildings had been damaged and people took refuge in Kyiv's metro stations after a second barrage of attacks in as many weeks. The mayor said Monday's barrage came in successive waves of 28 drones in what many fear could become a more common mode of attack as Russia seeks to avoid depleting its stockpiles of long-range precision missiles. However, the city's residents continued working and commuting around the city on Monday despite their fears after further attacks from drones. I feel very bad. I have two children and our morning started very loudly because the area where we live near the train station was hit. But after the air raid was finished, I had to go to my job. I drove to my work, but there was an air raid again. So I'm trying to stay close to a shelter, but I'm still outside. I know it's wrong. I'm so angry because I get news every minute. And I now understand that a couple where the women were six months pregnant were taken from rubble. So what can I feel? I'm full of rage. I'm full of rage and hate for those two-legged creatures. Rescuers continued to search for survivors in Kyiv on Monday after a drone slammed into a residential building in the capital. At least four people were killed in the attack and energy facilities were also struck elsewhere in the city. The drones appeared to include Iranian-made shahids. Visuals have come in of rescue workers recovering a body from the rubble of a building after waves of explosive latent suicide drones struck the capital. Russian forces have increasingly turned to targeting civilian infrastructure in Kyiv and other cities as winter approaches, disrupting electricity and fuel supplies. Ukraine's western partners have pledged to strengthen the country's air defences in the wake of the missile and drone attacks in recent weeks that often now target the heart of the capital, Kyiv. Ukraine's air forces said at least 37 kamikaze drones had been destroyed since Sunday night. Ukrainian patrol police on Monday shared footage showing police officers shooting down drones in Kyiv. This is the second wave of kamikaze attacks unleashed by Russia on Ukraine in just over a week. The name has a World War II link. Kamikaze derives from a tactic of attack adopted by the Japanese during World War II. Pilots of fighter planes laden with explosives in a suicide attack mission would crash into an enemy target to cause maximum damage. Like the Japanese planes, modern kamikaze drones too are destroyed after striking a target. From last night, from 9.30 p.m. until today, it is confirmed that at least 37 kamikaze drones have been destroyed. They have flown in from the south direction. According to preliminary estimations, around 85 to 86 percent of drones are destroyed by the air defense and other defense forces, including ground forces. The European Union is to greenlight a military training mission in Europe for thousands of Ukrainian troops and provide around half a billion euros in extra funds to help buy weapons for the war-torn country. The aim is to train some 15,000 Ukrainian troops, chiefly in Poland and Germany. It would range from standard military training to specialized instruction based on Ukraine's needs. It is hoped that the mission will be up and running by mid-November. These wars continue sending shockwaves around the world. Russia is more and more isolated. As we could see on the road last day, in the United Nations. Morally, politically, even military, Russia is losing this war. So we have to continue supporting Ukraine. And that's why the ministers will decide today. I hope it's going to be a six new tranche of the European Peace Facility, military support, and this a training mission, a powerful training mission, deployed out of the borders of Ukraine, but uh, providing and strong support of the Ukrainian military. Several EU and NATO nations are already training Ukraine's armed forces on a bilateral basis. NATO started training military instructors in Ukraine after Russia annexed the Crimean Peninsula in 2014. 
The military alliance believes that preparing the trainers is the most effective way of helping Ukraine's armed forces as it does not require troops needed for battle to leave the country. The ministers are also expected to approve a sixth tranche of money worth around 500 million euros from the European Peace Facility, a fund being used to reimburse member countries that provide weapons, ammunition and non-lethal military support to Ukraine. We saw this morning uh, again Kiev under a Russian attack. Therefore, it's very important that we respond decisively from the EU side and from, from our side. For me, it's very important that we establish a, a EU a military training mission to Ukraine and also that we uh, release more money uh, for um, supplying Ukraine with uh, weapons and not least also weapon system that can defend themselves against uh, these attacks we see at the moment. It will bring to just over 3 billion euros the total EU sum in security support being made available for Ukraine. Individual countries are also spending more on top of that.